but I don't think that's the right pronunciation anyway. It's starting now, Dart. <clears throat> okay. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Pepper All-Star All Tournament, sponsored by Nihilum and Kinguin. Today, we have an open tournament um, to place into the top four finals. Uh, joining with me today is none other than Kungin. How are you doing? Hello, everyone. I'm uh, doing well, and I just like to point out it's a it's a qualifier to the main All Star tournament that's in July. But I'm doing great. I hope you all are doing great as well. So we have some great games today. I know a few of the top European players are playing in this tournament, hoping to get a spot into the top. Uh, is there anyone you expect to have come out today to uh, take the whole thing? Um, well, we haven't really had a lot of information of who's uh, in this tournament, have we? So I'm not really sure uh, what of the top players are in this tournament, uh, personally. Uh, can check the list. Uh, but uh, well, when I checked uh, who signed up, I didn't really recognize a lot of the names. Maybe you recognize some, uh, since you've been playing a lot of more hearts than I have. Um, I'll take a look. So personally, I actually uh, play mostly in the North American scene. So a lot of these names will be new to me. So I'm actually really excited to see who's up and coming in the European scene and who we can expect in some of the major tournaments in the future. Um, for those who do not know, the Hearthstone, or the Hearthstone Dr. Pepper All-Star Tournament is a group of four separate qualifier tournaments. Four players from each will actually qualify to the finals in order to play in a 16-person playoffs to see who will become the Dr. Pepper Hearthstone All-Star. Um, what decks do you expect to see today? Obviously, a lot of ladder decks have kind of been popping up, some more dominant than the others. Is there anything in particular you really expect to see today? Uh, well, since uh, it's an open qualifier, I mean, uh, I expect it, there to be a lot of ladder players and not possibly tournament players. So whatever is popular on the ladder right now, I think those decks will uh, show up a lot right now. Uh, I was playing a lot of Hearthstone two weeks ago, and then uh, the Warrior, of course, was really popular with Grim Patron. So I expect that deck mm -hmm. to be very, very popular. Maybe Freeze Mage as well, since it's a really good deck pretty much against anything besides Druid. Yeah, exactly. Patron Warrior has been absolutely dominant. Um, for those new to the scene who haven't been playing at the top levels of Hearthstone, Grim Patron is one of those decks that just seems to really take advantage of any little weakness you have uh, while playing against it. If you don't draw the perfect combination, the Grim Patron can just take control of the game so quickly. Even with just dropping a Grim Patron into an Inner Rage, your single Whirlwind effects get you four minions that are just really difficult to actually take off the board. Yeah, it's ridiculous, and there is not many classes who has like a counter to the Grim Patron as well, uh, since most of the AoE in the game does like one damage or two damage. It's uh, I think the only hard counter against the deck is Warlock, isn't it? With like double Hellfire and Shadow Flame. And a lot also of people... See, that, that's one thing that actually a lot of people have been de uh, debating recently. It turns out that in recent tournaments, Grim Patron has actually been beating even the counter that most people would believe to be. Oh, really? Wow. Hand. Yes. It's just a burst damage that comes out of the deck. Uh, people are just starting kind of uh, reinventing how they play it, both against it and as the actual deck. Yeah. So uh, I'm not sure if it's one of those mere heroic type decks that Blizzard's eventually just going to nerf into the ground because it does really seem like you're playing solitaire when you're actually using the deck, either trying to get a huge board or just bursting down from even up to 50 health from no board state whatsoever with the Warsong frothing play. Yeah, I remember uh, in the beginning of the Grim Patron deck, uh, people weren't really using Inner Rage, and uh, when people started adding that, the deck just become way better than it was before since you had a turn five play which you usually didn't have earlier the deck started to become really good at like the later turns but now it's really good in the early turns and especially on turn five if you have an inner rage and just a grim pattern just that threat alone is just ridiculous 
Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's the effect of these combo decks, the amount of cards that they can cycle into and how quickly they can actually get to the cards they really need. You've seen uh, some of the top players like Zelay and Zixo, both on Archon, have started using a lot of loot hoarders. We've seen Kalento Mm. use not only loot hoarders, but Gnomish Inventors too, to even increase their cycle capabilities. They really do whatever they can in order to get a death spite as early as possible into Grim Patron and just blow up the board. So it looks like we are about to get started with our first match. Starting off, we're going to have It's Wasted versus Rex. Have you personally heard of either of these players? Uh, I have not heard of them. I'm not sure if I have run into them on the ladder. Uh, But no, I have not heard about these players before. So I have no clue what they're going to bring to the table. Taking a look, it looks like Rex is in legend i am actually not sure on its wasted but we can expect to see some good play from rex he is actually relatively high ranked in lead on the legend ladder currently so i would guess that one deck in his lineup would be the patron warriors we're speaking uh yeah do you personally know of any other major counters other than the handlock um I was playing it a lot for a while, and I, I think Handlock was the only the real deck that it was other Green Patron Warriors than Handlock <laughs> that I was didn't want to play against. Mostly, everything else seemed like a really good matchup, honestly. But I mean, you even said that Handlock has been losing lately. I, I was personally struggling against Handlock, but I I didn't have the same list that people use today, so that makes it a little bit different. Uh, there was like no inner rage back when I played Green Patron the most. Mm-hmm. So I guess they're going to queue up against each other any second here. Once we get and, started, we will be getting into the first game. And uh, every player for this tournament, I think they're, they're picking two decks. And whoever wins two games with these two decks will uh, qualify, qualify for the next round, basically. Mm-hmm. Now, one cool uh, thing about this tournament, I actually do not think it is single elimination nor it is set up in a bracket style. Um, how, how this works is a website actually, it's like, it seems like if I read this correctly, it is a type of Swiss where it matches player based on the amount of wins they've had, but then after a certain amount of losses knocks you out. Is that correct? Um, I think so. I think that's correct. Uh, I looked into the rules a little bit, but they were a little bit unclear when I read them. But it looks like we're getting into the first game now. It's a, uh, it's a mage. Oh, it looks like a mech mage against the mech standard mage druid. Egg. Druid. Yeah. Oh, mm-hmm. and as we see, the druid got exactly what he needs with the wild growth and innervate together. But the question is, will it be enough to actually uh, be able to deal with the turn one mana worm into a turn two snow chugger? Oh, wow, two Wild Growths. <laughs> he has to hope he draws some minions as well when you have two Wild Growths. But uh, Mech Mage is usually a very strong counter to dru- Druid. Uh, mm-hmm. When I play it myself, sometimes you just win on like turn 5, 6. Uh, it can be over really quickly if Druid doesn't have a quick answer. But he has double Wild Growth and Innovate, so he definitely has answers this time around. Now in uh, the mage's position right now, would you prefer a snow chugger or a Neutron in this type of board state? Mm, I think I would prefer the snow chugger here. Mm-hmm. I have uh, to agree. Big, bigger threat in general, and you also block the hero power, which could be the only answer, like the only thing Druid can do these turns. Yeah. And uh, I mean, well, you probably want to play a Neutron later because it really counters a lot of the Druid cards since it blocks them twice. So I guess this turn is pretty simple. Double mech, just to overwhelm the druid that doesn't really have any strong AOE. Make Warper into an Oetron. That's actually a perfect draw in order to yeah. curve out. Especially with the fireball in hand to actually take care of anything that drops down, particularly the druid of the claw. Oh, he's gonna be in big trouble here if he drops the taunter. Do you think he innervates the Sylvanas here? I think the Sylvanas is actually the best. Yeah. It does yeah, it's... out into Tonner the following turn. Yeah. Only yeah. issue with this is actually being able to kill off this Annoyatron. It's not going to be an easy move. Oh, wow. Now, do you so think... what do you do? Oh, he's fireballing before he's Fireball. attacking? It's a, 
I feel like that's, that's a uh, bit old move position. Um, don't you think you should attack first there? I actually think that might have been a little uh, misplayed right there. Yeah, a little misplayed. He missed out on two damage there. Especially because the fact that he went face with everything else. Uh, yeah. The a two three, even though he had a seventy five percent chance of actually pulling out a two three in that area. Um, That was definitely a weird play. They were playing very quickly, these guys. I think they should take a little bit more time here. Uh, I was thinking that just frostbolting the Sylvanas and just going face would have been a really good play as well. Uh, uh, just to keep it frozen for two turns, basically. Just getting a lot of damage on the Druid's face. Then you had frostbolt and fireball to do like the last damage mm -hmm. needed. Uh, so I think it's, uh, it's wasted on the mage is kind of struggling right now to... Uh, get... It's not looking good at all after that misplay. <laughs> he can't really attack here either. He would lose both his units. And what does he do here? Do you just pass here? I think you just pass. But the issue with passing is if the druid doesn't uh, have either swipe or wrath, which he does, yeah. he won't be able to get through the taunt anyways. Yeah, it's so a I really I guess that it's wasted is just in a very troubled position right now in Rex. Yeah very dominant in this game. Yeah, not having board against the Druid with the McMinch is very unusual. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So from here on, the Druid is definitely a big favorite here. Now, would you consider wrathing your own minion to cycle, or do you prefer to save it for one of the Mech Mage's minions at this point? It should probably save it. I mean, Wrath kills most of the minions in the deck, and uh, yeah, and uh, you can even uh, draw a card if it drops one of the cards with uh, one life, like the Clockwork Gnome here. Oh. Ooh. Mm. Now, what do I... you do here? I mean, you kind of want to draw with Wrath, but I guess you just kill it with Wrath, right? Mm -hmm. I would actually. I think I would consider actually just da and... <clears throat> damaging it for one. Just and then. Uh, oh, well, there trading we go. It. Perfect trade out. Yeah. But the time is, he just does not have a minion to play here. Exactly. I would have strongly considered <clears throat> actually killing um, the Shredder with the one damage plus the minion because you're going to do that anyways. I don't think the two minion that popped out of it was worthwhile to get rid of compared to possibly another card as a Druid. Because um, if he, especially with the odds of getting a minion for six mana or less, was probably very high just based yeah. on how Druids usually function. I would have really considered that, but at the same time, he does know that he has Sonarius coming up the following turn. Mm. So it doesn't really hinder him, really, by any means. What do you think about keeping both the gnome, uh, Clockwork Gnomes here? It's kind of weird. I mean, sure, Swipe would punish you really hard, but at the same time, you kind of have to drop everything against the Druid at this point, since the Druid will have more value on basically every card he plays at this point, since the Mech Mage is a much quicker deck. Yeah, I have to agree that the mage really yeah. has to try to aggro out and take advantage of this druid not having any minions. Exactly. Um, I mean, you basically have to drop everything. <laughs> you can't really save anything with a mech mage. Uh, it's not that kind of deck. Is he still considering saving Clockwork Gnome? Yeah, I don't really understand like, that. He would get two spare parts to use as well. It makes no sense to keep those two on your hand. Exactly. I, I see the only out for it's wasted is actually dropping those Clockwork Gnomes, hoping to get well, maybe the stealth spell part is one of them, yeah. and the uh, emergency yeah, could... to freeze one of the Druid's big minions. Exactly, because what, what if it draws like... Antonidas now when he doesn't have any spare parts? It's uh, very strange. I'm trying to think of what he's trying to play around by not dropping the Clockwork Gnome. No, it must be the swipe. Swipe, I guess, but... I mean, if he's swiping, he's not dropping a Scenarius at that turn, so... Yeah. What can he draw here to come back? I guess Dr. Boom and Antonidas is pretty much the only options that could do anything at all. Even and that's not board and nothing on it. He's still not dropping the clock for gnomes. <laughs> Actually, I have to say that it's wasted. This point is just completely done for in this game. Yeah. 
Now, he just drops a single clockwork now. I'm still trying to figure out what his reasoning behind that is. That, that's definitely something I would ask him if I was actually had the if I actually had the opportunity to talk to him. Yeah. I can't see any reason personally. Uh, silence wiper, pretty easy turn. Uh, we, we don't really have any deck list, so we don't know exactly what the players are playing, but uh, like if they have double force or not. From what we've seen, so far, the deck looks pretty standard. Exactly. From what we've seen from Rex's deck, I wouldn't be surprised to have one force of nature, two savage roars, or even maybe going as so far as actually having both the combos. And for those who actually don't know what we're talking about, the combo is Force of Nature, Savage Roar. And just from an empty board state, it actually does 14 damage for 9 mana. So it's a really big burst at the end of the game to finish off your opponent. But when combined with minions that are already on the field, it actually adds in their attack damage plus 2 per minion. So it does a, it's just a really effective Druid combo that actually just keeps the class. I would have to say it's a combo that keeps the Druid class a viable deck kind of throughout the entire history of the uh, Hearthstone. Yeah, looks like it's gonna be lethal the next turn here. It will be lethal the next turn here. Can't really do anything here. Can taunt up the 3 4 spider, but it's not gonna help him. So it looks like Rex will be taking game one of this best of three series. Ooh, and he actually did draw the final combo piece. So he has one force combo at least. I think uh, the winner is the one that has to swap deck, right? Or was Sorry? it the other way around? Uh, so this is actually conquest format. So now Rex will not be able to play Druid and he will exactly. have decks. Yeah. yeah, you have to win a game with both your decks to go through. Exactly. So how, how do you like Conquest format compared to the old Last Hero Standing version? Mm, I kind of like the Conquest format since uh, it means you have to be good with more decks than just stomping someone with one deck that you're really comfortable. Uh, and it, it gives the edge to people that, you know, put a bigger effort into the game and learn more classes and decks. So I, I like it, I like it. All right, so going into game two, we have Shaman versus Handlock. Uh, we have yeah. Rex on the Warlock side, and it's wasted on the Shaman. Now, this is an interesting matchup. It used to be that Shaman was the hard counter. Yeah, with the Urchuk on the, the Drakes. But how, how do you think that's changed, especially with the, uh, I guess, GBG I coming out and now even BRM? Yeah, I, I would consider the Handlock a favorite these days. Well, it depends on what kind of Shaman it is, I guess, but I would go with Handlock. They have so many minions, so many different minions. Now, back in the days, they basically only had the Drakes and the Giants and the, the Watchers, but now there's so many more minions in the deck, like Belchers, what else do they have? Um, all the Legendaries. Is there any other two units they have that they didn't have before? Um, I think it's a lot of single units, especially now with Emperor Taurus. Yeah. A lot of them are Yeah, a lot of legendaries. Um, mm -hmm. Most of them find a way to fit Sylvanas in. And I think the main reason behind being able to do that is heal bots. You used to really only be able to heal up with uh, Earth and Ring Fars here for three health. So you have two of those for a total of six. And then yeah. usually one or two Siphon Souls, which is another three to six health. Meanwhile, now with the addition of heal bot, you have eight health per minion, which is now all you're healing is just incumbents in two cards, just leaving multiple spots open, which just mm -hmm. really increase the power, the overall efficiency of the deck. Yeah. If he coins out the Drake now, he will get really punished though, and I think that's what it's gonna do. Yeah, it looks like it. Yeah, this is the strong counter we talked about before. That's basically what made Shamans the favorite. You had the two Archocks for the Drakes, and then you had Hex for the Giants, and back in the days, Handlock didn't really have much more, you know, power than that in their deck. Even so, though, I actually originally was taught Shaman by, I'm not sure if you remember him, but Grindstone, he was someone who used Shaman and held rank 1 Legend for... Oh, really? Oh, no, I don't know him. Like, three and a half weeks of the season. 
He was without a doubt the best Shaman player. And his number one tip for this matchup was do not kill the first Azure Drake with a uh, Earth Shock if possible. Oh, really? Mm. And his reasoning behind that was if you could use a Flame Tongue Totem and just Totems and wipe that off, it'll allow you to use that Earth Shock later in the game to actually finish off the Handlocks or a Taunt. Most yeah, exactly. When they Taunt up the Giants and stuff. Effective. But since the Shaman is playing a very defensive deck, uh, I mean, do you consider the Handlock the favorite as well there? I think I would actually give the overall odds to this game, even though the board state is very good for the Shaman currently. Mm -hmm. I think Rex should be able to take this. I'm not sure how the Shaman will eventually be able to deal with an Emperor Thorasan into yeah. a giant, into another giant. Yes, he has Earthshock and Hex again, but he just doesn't seem to have the current pressure to put the Handlock in a bad board state. Exactly. So I guess he will drop the giant here, which will eventually be hexed, most likely. <laughs> you ever... oh, is there anything else that would you consider? Would you consider Shadow Flaming this board or just taunting up? Uh... I think Shadow Flame is a very crucial card currently. One of yeah. the options I was considering, what do you think about Dark Bombing the Shade of Naxxramas into Mortar Coil to draw a card there? Mm. Simply taunting up the Ancient Watcher force the Shaman to have an answer to it. Yeah, I think what you just said would be the best play here as well. I would always keep I would always keep the AoE here, especially since he doesn't have an Hellfire on his hand. In case, I mean, this kind of Shaman usually plays Feral Spirits, I would assume. And, and his play right here just very simply runs into a Fire Elemental on turn 6. Yes. That, that, that's a roll of Shaman. On turn 6, you don't have a minion on the board with 3 or less health. You just exactly. Know <laughs> they always have the fire elemental, especially. Um, I've even seen some shamans now running dragon versions with the Blackwing Corruptor, so that way they have four fire elemental effects. Oh wow! Yeah, that sounds pretty strong. I'm not sure how effective they've been, but it seems like a fun deck to try. Now. Well it's actually been one argument. Obviously, Fire Elemental is a great card. Let's say Blackwing Corruptor was a card that didn't require dragons. Do you think it would see more play than what we've seen? Well, it would definitely have been more play. It would, I mean, it's it's a 5-4 for 5, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, yes, definitely. I, I think oh, it would oh, be sorry. better than the Fire Elemental then. <laughs> it's a five, it's 5 mana, not 4. Yeah, 5 mana, 5-4, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, it would have been played uh, a lot more definitely. I mean, three damage one turn earlier is even stronger than three damages on turn six. So, definitely. I don't know. That difference mm -hmm. between four and five health can be very, very. I guess. Mm, that's true as well. Like that. But most of the I... nukes in the game does three damage though. That's true. Uh, but five is definitely a lot. Of, uh, Five is a very important number in Hearthstone. I think that's one of the reasons why Lothep, when it originally came out, was just so good, and why Belcher has just been such a dominant card in terms of defensiveness. Just the five health is so difficult to deal with, especially with Druid with such a popular class. Yeah, almost every nuke is four damage or lower in the game. So it looks like it's Waste is just going to try to clear this board up and forcing the Hamlock mm -hmm. to actually have an answer to uh, his current board state. He's finally actually starting to gain some pressure, really put on the damage. Um, it's still looking pretty good for the Handlock, I would say. It doesn't have any strong minions at all, the Shaman. Definitely, but I, I wouldn't completely count him out, especially if he's able to... Again, we don't. We actually do not have the deck list for either player. But if the shaman right now does run any big minions that aren't susceptible to big game hunter, the handlock may not have an answer to it. What do you do here? Do you giant dark bomb, or do you prefer just slamming down a belcher here? I would probably bait out with the belcher because he might even use something like a hex on it. Who knows? 
Yeah, I have to agree with that move. It's the shaman does not have an easy way to get through this without using their shock or hex. Yeah, there we go. So I assume he's playing Drake here. Yeah, I should definitely have Drake first to see if he had something better. But yeah, that, that's a common rule in Hearthstone that a lot of new players yeah. actually make little mistakes on. Is if you have the ability to draw, you should always do that early in your turn. Just in case exactly. you have another card that changes your move. Yeah, it's very important to plan out your whole turn and not just your first card on first card on your turn yeah. before you start putting things on the board. And then we get into like the absolute top level plays. Some of the pros will actually especially for difficult oh, purposes, wow. for even handlock we have multiple things to do. They plan out their entire turn before playing a single yeah. card. Would you consider playing uh, the Giant first here? Because you can Giant, Hellfire, and Mortal Coil here, and it leaves the Giant at 5 life, which looks, seems to be a pretty good number to me. The only issue with that is then it becomes susceptible to Crackle. Um, obviously, mm -hmm. you would need some luck to actually get the 5 or even a Spell, to spell uh, Totem, but it's something you yeah. should absolutely consider. And I think I would actually agree with you in this position. Oh, it's too soon. Okay, well, uh, that's fine as well, I think. Keeping the Hellfire might be a good... So just taunting up the Giant, make sure he doesn't get yeah. burned down. Leaving up Spell Tower, Totem is always a scary thing to do, though. But it's Silence, and hmm, probably not worth to silence it, though. I think Rex knows that he has seen one Rockbiter weapon, though, so he can't um, get bursted down from 18 that easily. Yeah. At the same time, you still don't want to take a chance. For all he knows, the Shaman could be running. Like, even an Alakia Rockbiter would have done 12 damage plus a 3 on board, putting him to 3, and I don't think he wants to even take that chance at this point. That's true, that's true. Hmm, how much damage? No, he doesn't really have any. I wonder how much damage he has in his deck to Shaman. If he does run Crackles or Lava Burst, probably runs two Crackle. I would be surprised if he has any other nukes than that. It seems to be a very slow Shaman deck so far. Oh, wow. And I actually have to say that it's wasted. One important thing that I think he made us like... Oh, wow. ...is the placement of his totems. Um, I personally think that placing the shredder on the far left side would have been better because every time you make a totem, mm -hmm. it's the right side. Exactly. So Sh Shaman is one of the few decks currently that placement really matters. Um, we don't see it played very often, so a lot of players are inexperienced with that aspect of the game right now. But placement, when it comes to a deck like this, can make such a difference throughout the game. <laughs> I think putting him at 11 in this position was not a great play. <laughs> <You can't... laughs> it sets him up, like Hellfire basically clears the board and then you have two Molten Giants right after Double. that and even a heal on top of that. Uh, uh, usually when you play Handlock you don't want to put him around like 14 and down. You would rather like go for a straight lethal at that point and just control the board. Uh, it's very important to avoid the Molten Giants. I have to say, I think that move just sealed the game here. Rex yes. will be taking game two unless some miracle Deathwing comes out very, very soon. Would be interesting to see what ranks the people have. We only saw Rex rank and he was a high legend player. I have no clue if it's wasted as a legend player or is or not, I for I example. I saw that it's wasted was rank 11 non legend. Okay. So, most likely either a newer player or someone who plays yeah. low casually. While mm -hmm. is obviously very experienced, as we've seen with the uh, yeah. work he's taken with each turn. Yeah, Rex has been playing very good. Uh, some misplays from It's Wasted so far. <laughs> I think Rex at this point is pretty confident. Um, he would yeah. was about to consider actually using Iron Beak Owl to silence that totem just in case of a double lightning storm play to possibly wipe his board but i think in this situation he's really not that worried about it nah you probably want to keep it i think no so, does he have any outs or is this game over he no this game is over 
we just get time. Yeah, he can't kill the thing and on the board and Tom 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 won't save him here. So there we have it. Rex takes game two and the series for the best of three and moves on. Um once again I don't think it's wasted, it's out of this tournament just yet. He will have a few more chances, uh to continue playing. And hopefully we actually see both of them again. Uh, Rex looked uh, very good, very good. So uh, they, I think they are allowed to change decks between the game, and not between like one game, but between another series as well. I think I think I read that. So we might see Rex with other decks if we, he pops up again. I, I'm excited to actually see Rex playing. He, I agreed with the majority of moves he actually made throughout those games. He seemed like a very experienced player, brought some of the better decks. Um, I, I think he's going to go very far in this tournament. Definitely. Yeah, but, I mean, we don't really know uh, how strong the bracket is. So, uh, yeah, we'll see. I mean, he might be one of the best players in the tournament. All right, so we will be taking a short break while we prepare the next match. Thank you all for tuning in tuning in and we will be right back. <laughs> 